Hey everyone, I hope you're doing great today. I got a little story for you it's for nighttime. It's called Otto in the Attic, the Batman of Milwaukee. On August 22nd, 1922, Osterai Fred was having a particularly heated argument with his wife, while Berja Dolly Osterai. Suddenly he was faced with the impossible appearance of a man who had worked for him for almost a decade ago in a city over 2,000 miles away. Why he was there and what happened next real one of the most salacious and bizarre love stories in the nation and that they have ever seen. Dolly was born in 1880 in Germany. She and her family moved to the United States and she grew up poor on a Midwest farm in her early 20s. She married a wealthy apron factory owner in Milwaukee, Fred, uh, Fred Osterai. Fred was both a workaholic and an alcoholic, leaving Dolly alone and sexually unsatisfied most of the time. One hot summer day in 1913, Dolly told Fred that her sewing machine was broken and asked him to send someone to repair it. She knew Fred would send Otto San Huber, the 17-year-old repair boy who worked at the factory. Otto had caught Dolly's eye during a visit to the factory, and she was eager to see him again. When Otto arrived, Dolly answered the door in nothing but a robe and stockings. From that moment on, Dolly and Otto were embroiled in an affair. At first, they took the usual option deployed when someone is sneaking around behind their spouse's back. They met at a hotel room and tried their hardest to keep their stealings a secret. Soon, that got to be too much work and Otto just came over to the Osteri house to have sex in Dolly and Fred's bed. Dolly's neighbors started noticing the strange man, who definitely wasn't her husband, visiting the home often. She told them he was her vagabond half-brother to slough off any suspicion that she was cheating on Fred. Eventually, Dolly realized that her nosy neighbors knew too much and Otto couldn't keep coming over so obviously. Instead of stopping the affair or going back to meeting secretly hotels, Dolly suggested that Otto quit his job at the factory and move into the Osterai's attic. For some reason, Otto agreed to this absurd arrangement. Even more absurd, it went on for five years. Otto lived in the attic, never venturing out unless it was to have sex with Dolly. He spent his free time writing pulp fiction stories and even managed to get some published under a pen name. Fred, a severe alcoholic, didn't really notice much for a long time. He did think he was going mad or even being haunted as Otto reached his five-year attic anniversary. Fred thought he heard noises coming from upstairs, saw shadows out of the corner of her eye, and noticed his cigars were disappearing. This not entirely in the misplaced paranoia led Fred to want to move out of the Milwaukee home. He suggested to Dolly that they move to Los Angeles. This was the perfect opportunity for Dolly to come clean about the affair or let Otto go and live his own life. However, that didn't happen. Dolly found a house in LA with an attic and sent Otto ahead to set up his attic space before she and the still oblivious Fred moved in. Otto spent another four years living in the Osterized attic, his only activities being writing and sex with Dolly. Then came that August day in 1922. Otto heard Dolly and Fred arguing on the floor below, and afraid Fred would hurt her, he jumped down from his hiding space holding two pistols. The men fought, and Otto ended up firing three bullets into Fred's chest, killing him. Dolly panicked, knowing the neighbors would probably have heard gunshots and called the police. How was she going to explain any of this odd scene? Otto and Dolly agreed to stage the room to look like a botched burglary. Otto locked Dolly in the closet and took the key, along with the murder weapon, back up to the attic. The police arrived to find Fred dead and Dolly locked up. She said someone had broken in, shoved her in the closet, shot Fred, and sold a bunch of valuables, including Fred's diamond watch. With Fred out of the picture, you would expect Otto to just move into the main house and be with Dolly officially. However, Otto continued to live up in the attic. In fact, Dolly even moved out of the house where her husband was killed, and Otto followed her to live in her new attic. Dolly began several affairs with different men around town. She started seeing lawyer Herman S. Shapiro and a man that was named Roy Clum. It seems that she was just dating Clem so that he would help her to dispose of the murder weapon. She told him he, she owned a gun that was very similar to the one that robbed, to, that the one that the robber had used to murder Fred and wanted Clem to get rid of it, Let, lest she be implicated in the murder. He threw it in the La Brea tar pits. One source says he, she also convinced a neighbor to bury the other pistol Otto was holding the night in his backyard. As Dolly's relationship with Shapiro progressed, she gifted him a diamond watch, the same diamond watch the old police she told the police her husband's murderer had stolen from the house. Shapiro brought this up with her, and she said she had later found it under a couch cushion, but hadn't felt the need to report it to the police. Meanwhile, Dolly had gotten what she needed from Clum and had unceremoniously broken up with him. As revenge, Clum went to the police with the information about the gun he had disposed of at Dolly's request. Dolly was arrested based on Clum's story. The tar pits were dredged and the gun was found, though it was badly corroded. 
While waiting her hearing, Dolly and Shapiro about her half-brother who lived in the attic and asked him to bring him groceries. She said all he had to do was tap on the ceiling of the bedroom closet to let him know he should come out. Shapiro did what Dolly asked, but not having spoken to another human besides Dolly for almost a decade, Otto excitedly spilled his guts about the real nature of the relationship with Dolly. Shapiro told him to leave the house and get out of town. Otto left and briefly moved to Canada. Because the gun evidence was so damaged and the police still couldn't explain how Dolly would have ended up locked in the closet if she had killed Fred, she was released. Shapiro was apparently not turned off by the murder suspicion or the weird relationship with the man in the attic. He moved in with Dolly and they lived happily for the next seven years. As the relationship started deteriorating though, Shapiro followed in Clum's footsteps and decided to get revenge by going to the police with what he knew about Otto and Fred's death. Once again, Dolly was taken into custody and a warrant went out for Otto's arrest. Weirdly, he had just moved back to L.A. from Canada and was brought in by the police. Otto was found guilty of manslaughter. However, the statute of limitations of convicting the crime was seven years and it had already been eight. Otto walked free. He continued writing and, as far as anyone can tell, didn't go live in anyone else's attic. Dolly's trial ended in a hung jury and the charges were eventually dropped in 1936. She took another lover and lived with him in harmony until she died in 1961 at 80 years old. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. Have a great night. Bye.